Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I'm the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas. This year we decided to go through the entire book of Revelation, and we're just going to do it in little small chunks. Just piece by piece, a little eight minutes here, ten minutes there. You're more than welcome to read along with us. We're still in Revelation chapter 1. Uh, we're at verse 16, and we've left John, the author, kneeling at the feet of Jesus in worship. You know, and I've had some people say, boy, I can't wait to get to heaven to give God a piece of my mind. Or I can't wait to get up there, you know, and I'll, I'll just tell God to let me in, right? I'll just explain to God uh, that I've been a good person. Uh, or, you know, or that when I get to heaven, I got a couple of questions for him that he needs to answer. And I think to myself, when you're in the presence of God, really, you, you, you think that when you're in the presence of God, you're going to have clarity, that you're going to be in the right state of mind. You, you think that you'll be able to think straight or speak or articulate or you'll be able to put words together. I think when you stand in the presence of God, you're going to lose all your ability to function normally. Just like we see here from John, he falls down on his knees in worship. I think when you're in the presence of God, that's the only thing you'll be able to do. Fall over. And this is where we've left John. He's on the ground. So what do we see Jesus do in verse 17? Jesus lays his right hand on me saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last and the living one. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death and Hades. Write, therefore, the things that you have seen. Jesus begins with, Do not be afraid much like what we hear from heavenly beings all through the Bible, even the angels at Christmas time, right? Why, why do they say that? Why do you think they say, do not be afraid? Because heavenly beings are scary. So Jesus comforts him with his voice, with his touch. He gives reassurances and says, hey, it's me, right? Because John knows Jesus. He knew the earthly Jesus as a friend. And Jesus says, hey, John, it's me, it's Jesus. And I think we could just pause here for a second. We can think about this because yes, I agree. We typically stay away from Revelation because we think it's confusing. But I think some would make the case that that's how the whole Bible is for them. They think the whole Bible is confusing and it can be hard to understand. But I think that's a good thing. You know, one of the things we try to instill in children is that just because it's hard doesn't mean it's bad. And when something is hard, we push through it. We try, right? So I think the hardness of Scripture is a good thing. It makes us grow. And it should make us think. It should stretch us. So if John's worshiping, and he's on his knees. He reacted. He felt like that was the right, most appropriate thing to do. Let's think about what happens when we are in the presence of God. When we go to church, when we have a moment to pray in our home, or when we decide to break open our Bible and to go through it, what, what's our posture? What's our attitude when we are in the presence of God? You know, we sing to Jesus, right? We pray to God. We read God's word in his book. You might even have pictures of Jesus in your home. So when you close your eyes and you're imagining that you're in the presence of God in those moments, who are you thinking about? What images are coming into your mind? And I would ask you, are they the pictures of a being that would cripple you and make you fall over just to be in his presence? Because here's what I don't want to do. I don't want to get complacent. And I don't want to forget who God is. I want to remember that I am speaking to a being that I can't become so casual with at times. I, I don't want my prayers to become casual. I don't want to sing in church and find my mind daydreaming about all the things I need to do and forget who it is that I'm singing to. I don't want my prayer to be so fast 
and so familiar before I go to bed? Am I just, you know, saying, thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for this food. Blah, blah, blah. Good night. Amen. I don't want to do that. When we pray, when we worship, when we sing, I should be thinking about being in the presence of God. I should be practicing his presence. Listen to all these verses in the Old Testament about worship. Psalm 95, O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Psalm 92, 2, ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Psalm 99, 5, exalt the Lord our God. Worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Psalm 96, 9, Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. How does the Bible describe worship? Glory, falling down, kneeling, trembling. Why? Because heavenly beings are scary. (laughs) No, no, that's not why. Because he's holy right? Because he's holy, because he's God, because we are here, right? And God is here. Look, even if I skip ahead in Revelation, let's go to Revelation chapter 4. I'll just sh- show you a picture of what I'm talking about. Revelation chapter 4, verses 10 through 11. The 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns, before the throne, saying, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Here are beings in heaven, spiritual beings, who live in glory with God every day, and even they fall down before the Lord. So I have to ask, okay, so what's the important thing for me? In reading these passages and thinking about this topic, what's my takeaway? Well, I would ask, how do I worship? Right? How do I worship? Do I kneel? Do I bow down? Is it important for me if I raise my hands or if I close my eyes? What am I doing in my mind when I pray? Am I just saying the same words over and over again? What happens when I sing? Am I just tuning out and not thinking about what I'm saying? Sometimes I think it's not important what we do with our body. You know, you might be thinking, well, I don't kneel or I don't raise my hands or I don't close my eyes. That's okay. I mean, that's posture. That's just your posture. That's your body reacting to what's already going on inside your head. But I think the important thing And the thing that we're meant to take away from this passage in Revelation is what is going on inside our head, right? Because we are noticing people who are in the presence of God. You know, the spiritual beings, the the elders, the 24 elders, they they, they are in the presence of God daily. Then we have John who just experienced for the first time what it's like to be in the presence of God. I think it means remembering who it is that we pray to, right? Practicing this, practicing the presence of God, remembering who God is when we pray, remembering who God is when I sing, remembering whose words I am reading when I read these scriptures, remembering that when I come to church or when I don't come to church, this is the same God This is the same God who makes these requests of me. The same God I tithe to. This is the same God that I confess my sins to. This is the same God I ask for help from. You and I, we need to practice being in his presence. I I think there's nothing more important in our day than when we pray. When we are talking to our creator We have those moments when we're reading the scriptures and reading his word to us when we're in church or when we're just somewhere and we're singing and we're worshiping God. I think in all of those moments, what goes on in our mind has to be just as important 
with what I do with my hands and if I kneel or stand. We should be practicing being in the presence of this holy, holy God. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.